through time, you will know what it's like to lose. To feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail all the same. Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. here to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel and first and foremost I want to give all praises honor and glory to Abanawa Yahala in the name of his only begotten son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ Jesus Christ so why are we out here we're gonna start off with Jeremiah 7 25 and in the meantime, we're going to start telling a story. You got that 725? Mr. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 25. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, until this day, I have even sent unto you all my, pro all my servants, the prophets. Daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearken not unto me. So like the verse just said, we're out here as the prophets of the Lord. Right. We're trying to wake up our, the lost sheep. Right. We're trying to bring the children of Israel to that 144 fold. Right. Let me get the book of Genesis 22 and we'll start at verse 1. Because we need to know who this, these scriptures is talking about. Right. Everybody thinks that these scriptures is talking about everybody. Right. Who needs salvation? Do they need salvation? Uh -huh. They don't need salvation. Uh -huh. They're walking on stolen land. That's right. They don't need salvation. Right. We need to be saved from them. Right. Let me get that scripture. That's this is the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tip Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and give thee unto the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering. So like we like we just read, God was only dealing with Abraham and his son. He wasn't dealing with everybody. Let's get verse six. Come on. This is the book of Genesis, chapter twenty-two, verse six. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. So he was getting ready to sacrifice his son. Why was he sacrificing his son? Right. Because the Most High gave him an order and he followed it. That's right. What Abraham did was a lot of what our people won't do. Follow orders. That's right. How can you have disobedient children and still expect to get some prizes? Right. The Most High doesn't work like that. Right. Keep going. And laid it upon Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went, went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the... Hey, sisters, you guys don't have to cross the street for us. We can still get you over there. Right. You know it's the Shabbat? Did you know that? It's not Sunday? Gone. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? 
And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb. And there you go. God will provide a lamb. See, Abraham was so focused on his Lord, he believed that bringing his son up as a sacrifice was going to be what the Most High needed. He wanted to be an obedient child. We have a bunch of disobedient children running around dressed in nothing. Let's keep going with the story. Behold, the fire and the wood, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And yet again, he's just reinforcing the idea that the Most High is going to be the one that's in control, providing everything that we need. Uh, so they went both of them together, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord came unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Verse 12, and he said, Lay not thy hand upon the land, neither do thou anything unto him. So again, Abraham was doing what he was told. And at the very last second, the Most High sent down one of his angels to stop him. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? He was testing his faith. He was testing to see if Abraham was going to follow through with one of his commandments. Let's keep going. Now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by the horns. And just like that, the Most High comes through in the clutch. He brings a ram, sticks it in the thicket, so that he doesn't have to sacrifice his son. But again, he's trying to find the obedience. Here on Glenwood, we don't see a lot of obedience. This is supposed to be the Shabbat, the Sabbath day. What day is the Sabbath day? The seventh day. And yet here our people are walking up and down the street on a Sabbath, breaking it. Right. Yet everybody says they love God. Right. If he said keep my Sabbath and you out here breaking the Sabbath, that doesn't seem like love to me. Right. Give me verse 15. Done. This is the book of Genesis chapter 22 verse 15. Bring it out. And the angel of the Lord called upon Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing will I bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven. Oh man. So yet again, Abraham is getting a blessing. You'll see in the Christianity, they say anybody of Abraham is blessed. But what is that talking about? He just said, the stars of heaven. Who are the stars of heaven? Right. That's the question that we need to understand. Yeah, bring it out, huh? Let me get Exodus 32 and 13. Them up, Exodus 32 and 13. So we're going to find out who these stars of heaven are. Because people are clueless on this. Let's find out. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 13. No. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and says unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. Oh, man. Now we got a problem. God was pretty specific in that. He said, Abraham, then Isaac, and then Jacob. 
who was surnamed Israel later. So this is looking a little sketchy to me because, again, it doesn't say everybody. It only says a select people. And we're going to keep going with it. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. There it is. More confirmation of something that we already know. Let me get the book of Deuteronomy 1 and 10. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 10. The Lord your God have multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of the heaven. Oh man, the stars of heaven again. Now to get a little bit of context of who this is talking about, let's jump to verse 3. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 3. And it came to pass in the fourth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke unto the children of Israel. Oh man. There it is again. The stars of heaven, the children of Israel. Do we need further confirmation? Let's keep going. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 1 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Oh, man. This is looking bad. This is looking bad. I think we did what uh, four or five verses that all said the same thing. The stars of heaven are the children of Israel. Not the children of Moab, not the children of Ammon, not the children of Edom, but the children of Israel. That is who God loves forever and always. Let's keep going. Up, Bring it out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. Whoa. Did he just say what I think he said? Start, start from the top one more time. I don't think he said that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people, under. Above all people, equal to. Above, Above all, all people, people that are upon the face of the earth, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would take the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, Hath the Lord brought you out of a Salakia? Hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the from the hands of Pharaoh, king of Egypt? Oh man! Another confirmation. Another confirmation. This goes right back to the book of Exodus. Who was the book of Exodus about? It was about the Most High bringing a savior to the children of Israel. Why? Because he remembered the promises that he made to his father, Jacob, and then before him, Isaac, and before him, Abraham. But we read that already. Let's get another verse to confirm. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 1 and verse 1. Take your time, Pastor. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. And there it is again. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 1, says the children of Israel. Let me get... So as we can see with these verses, it's not looking good for these other nations. Here's some other nations in front of me right now. Hey, you, 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ? 100% come talk to me about him. What does he look like? Do you know? He looks like you. Oh man, he don't look like me. Hey, he don't look like me. <laughs> I'll say it. Let me get that one. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Whoa, 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 whoa. He showeth his word unto Jacob. Right, right. It didn't say everybody. Right. It said Jacob. Let's keep going. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And yet again, another confirmation that God is only dealing with the children of Israel. Oh, you're asking great questions. Come over here and talk to me. You, you feel, okay, fine. Let's get one more verse. I want to I get a confirmation. I want to get a nail in the coffin. It's the book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known. I've known everybody. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Of all the families of Mars. Of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Right. Oh, man. That was the scriptures right there. So, who are the children of Israel? That's the question we want to know, right? Let's get the book of Exodus. We'll start at verse, uh, chapter 1, we'll start at verse 7. Come on, Bob. Maybe you can explain who the children of Israel are. This is the book of Exodus chapter 1 verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. So what this is talking about, this was talking about when the children of Israel were, were in the land of Egypt. Right? And they were waxing strong, just like the verse said. Right. Then arose a new king that didn't know Joseph. Let's keep going. Verse 9. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Least they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. So those Egyptians were pretty, uh, they were pretty shook sure. that the children of Israel, who were already greater than them, were going to surpass them. Scared to death. Scared to death. Right? Sure. Let's see verse 2. Let me get verse 2 and 1. This is the book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 1 And the woman conceived and bare a son And when she saw him um, So like you hear what the scriptures say it, This entire Bible is strictly speaking about the children of Israel That's right. Now why did they uh, get put into slavery? Let me find that slavery verse That's um yeah, uh, yeah, verse 11. It's in the entire book. The entire book. Pick a pick pick a chapter. Pick a pick a book. Right. So what's the difference between the New Testament and the Old Testament? What's the difference? I'm asking. What's the church that is being talked about in the entire book? I, pro I just read maybe a plethora of scriptures, maybe 10, 12, that just talked about the children of Israel, Bring it out, huh? right? The church that's being talked about 
I, I don't know. I don't think so. I, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that you are from the tribe of Edom, according to the Bible. No. Right. What can I help you with, brother? Oh, you just listening? You know who you are according to the Bible? You see your uh you see your nationality on there? In case nobody's figured it out. Judah. Right? Okay, the children of Israel are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's who the children of Israel are. Bring it out, right? Teach y'all. So this brother says that he would be from the tribe of Judah. Right. So what do you know about the Bible? What, how, how, how familiar are you with the scriptures? Pretty familiar, right? Um, just the book of Genesis chapter 49 verse eight. And Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouches a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rise him up? So you're just coming here, right? So, but we went through a plethora of scriptures, right? That just talk about the children of Israel. Right. So one way that we can tell who the children of Israel are right. is by their curses. Right? So, initially, they had to be saved from Egypt from what? What were they doing when they were in Egypt? They were slaves, right? So, the Most High saved them out. By how? By Moses, right? He brought them across the Red Sea. You know, they were in the wilderness for about 40 years, and they kept going, right? So, one way that we can tell who the children of Israel are is by these curses, because he said that the curses would be on you forever right. right that's right and it would be a sign as a matter of fact let's pull that scripture right now yeah. let me get it's the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 yeah. but it shall come to pass if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes which i command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right. So because the children of Israel didn't follow what the Most High told them, he cursed them. And he said, if you're going to continue in sin, then I'm going to continue whooping your ass. Right. Pretty much, essentially. So how do you know, uh, besides reading it physically, how would you know if you're a cursed person? Right. How can you tell? Maybe if I could read you some of the curses, That's right. maybe that'll help you to understand, right? Actually, let's start at verse 46, 28 verse 46. Bring it up. Uh, it's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So he just said it would be upon the seed of Israel forever, right. right? Let's read some of these curses and find out. Let's go to uh, verse 16. It's the, it's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 16. Right, curse shalt thou be in the city. So, curse shall thou be in the city. When you go to every city in America, who are the most downtrodden, abused, uh, what other adjectives can I use to describe depravity? Discriminated, Discriminated against, Aged. killed, unappreciated. Right. Uh, work the hardest. Work the hardest, right? Yeah. You, you, you work the most, but you get paid the less. Right. You, know, you get paid the least, right? Who are these people? 
people of color, exactly. If I looked at her, would I be able to say the same thing about her? She looks pretty comfortable right now, right? I couldn't probably say the same thing about her. I could probably say it about that brother right there and that sister, right? But let's keep, I, but that's, but I just read 13 verses that said that he was only dealing with the children of Israel, right? right? So another verse just said that they would be cursed in the city. Did you get a card already? Hey, Corey, Corey got it. Got it? Uh, absolutely, you got it. Check out that YouTube page. Hey, you know that's in the Bible, right? Yeah, can we read it for you? Do you know what Jesus looks like? You know what's in the Bible? Okay, let's get it for you. Let's get Revelation. That's right, T-Top. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelations of Jesus Christ. So the revelation means to reveal. Right. So it's going to reveal Jesus Christ. Right. You can listen to this too, brother. Which God gave unto him to shew unto his, unto his servants which things which must shortly come to pass. Right. So let's go to uh, verse 13. Come. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man? Christ, right? All right. Clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about, about the paps with a golden girdle. So what that said was that he had a garment that went all the way down to his feet, right. right? And he had a golden championship belt, it looked like. Let's keep going. Verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. Now, when you look all over the world, what type of people have woolly hair? Do you have woolly hair? Does he have woolly hair? I don't. It may be bad, but I don't think it's woolly. Let's keep going. As white as snow, his eyes were as a flame of fire. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. Now are your feet the same color as the rest of your body? What color is brass? What color is brass, brother? Like a brownish, right? Okay, let's see, let's see how brown. As if they were burned in a furnace. Now when you put anything in a furnace, what color does it turn? Yeah, it turns really, really, real dark, right? Okay. His voice as the sound of many waters. So that means that his voice was extremely loud. He didn't need a microphone like I do. He could probably talk to people all the way down there and they would hear him clear as day. So what would you what would you say just based off of this description? What would Christ look like? He'd be pretty dark, huh? Yeah. Okay. That's definitely uh that's definitely a a, a, a big truth. Um. Verse should I bring up? Well, the reason why it would be good to know what he looked like is so that we can dispel all the myths that we've been told in our entire life, right? And we know uh, it, it, it gives us a, a gauge on... Let me pull this up real quick. So would you say that this is what the church gives us as a description of Christ? Minus the horns, minus all the, all the excess. If you looked at that picture, would that be the same thing that you would see in almost every single church? Bring it out, huh? I think so. I've been to a lot of churches. Yeah. I've been to Catholic churches. I've been to Christian churches, Baptists. Right? So if you see this, this picture constantly, what does that instill in people who don't look like that? then I'm going to start thinking that my God is a white boy. That this is true, right? 
precept. Bring that up. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. I behold, till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garments were white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. Oh, man. So what that was describing, that's describing the Heavenly Father. Right. You know they're two different people? That's another topic, but this right here is describing the Heavenly Father and what he looks like. Right. It just said his hair was of pure wool. That's another person with woolly hair. That's it. Keep going. His throne was like the fury fire flame, and his wheels as of burning fire. So what it's describing, it's describing... Uh, so Daniel is seeing the vision, and the vision he's seeing is of the Most High. He's seeing his throne, he's seeing the chariots that are around him, he's seeing the angels, he's seeing everything, right? Huh? Give me one second, and then I'm going to continue with the story. But I just want to show you also what the Most High looks like. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 10, verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed, whose loins were girded with fine gold of upas. What that's doing is that's reinforcing what was said already in Revelation 1. It's describing Christ. It's saying he had the garment down to his foot with a golden belt. Let's keep going. His body was like the bow, and his face as the appearance of lightning. The color of barrel, barrel is a sort of rock, it's sort of a diamond, kind of, and it's brown. Have you ever seen what a barrel looks like? You should look it up. His eyes as of lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass. There it is again. It's showing Christ. It's giving a description of Christ, showing that he was a melanated man. Right. <clears throat> She's loving this. Yeah. She's loving this. Yeah. You enjoying yourself? You enjoying this? Huh? <laughs> so, here's the question that I want to ask to you. The church teaches that. God loves everybody, Christ loves everybody, he's coming back for everybody. Now, when you think about the word salvation, what does that mean to you? Do you hear a, a, a saving in there somewhere? Like somebody has to be saved from something, right? Do you think just generally talking, do you think that your people have to be saved from anything? The people who look just like you. Yes. Okay. Well, what's your father? Where is he from? From Italy? So he's Italian. The Italian band. So I'm, I'm here to do two things. I'm here to wake up my people and to explain to the other nations, which would be your people and everybody else, that God doesn't love everybody. He has us, no, he doesn't. He has a selected people. Did you catch Deuteronomy 7 and 6? Let's read it again for her. That's right. Want to read Deuteronomy 7 and 6? This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So what did the verse just say? Did he say that they were a chosen people? Let me read it again. Come on, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. Chosen everybody. Chosen thee. Chosen them. Chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. Under. Above
above all people belong. Above all people equal to. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's pretty cut and dry right there. There's not much description on that. So, yet again, we just see how the church has manipulated everybody's mind to believe a certain thing that's not true. But what I could do, I could show you where you, your future, if you like. You want me to show you that? It's pretty bright. It's pretty bright. Let me get Isaiah 14 and 1. It's, it's going to be pretty bright. Let's bring this out. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. There's that word Jacob again. Who's Jacob? Israel, right? Let's keep going. And will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers. Oh, man. The strangers. So if you're not a part of Israel, would you be considered a stranger? Okay. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them. Ask them. Take them. Beg them. Take them. And bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Ooh. That's harsh. Uh, possess is hard. Like if that jacket is your possession can i have it no i don't want it it's okay you can have it but it's one of your possessions right it's your property okay let's keep going and the house of israel shall possess them and the land of the lord for servants and handmaids right did you hear that so what this is is this is a future prophecy of what's coming to the all the strangers that aren't Israel. They're going to be servants and handmaids. How do you like that? Yeah. How do you like the idea of being a servant or a handmaid to a child of Israel? Here's the thing. I'm going to show you this poster. Do you think these people had a choice? And what happened to them? They didn't. So in turn, you know, everybody always talks about the golden rule. Do, as to, do unto others as you would have done to yourself, right? So what do you think needs to happen because of that travesty? Even though I've already read it to you. What do you think needs to happen? Payback, right? Okay. Let's keep reading. Come. And the house of Israel shall possess them and the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Right. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. Right. Oh, man. I mean, should I keep going? Okay, let's get verse 21. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their father. So what did that just mean to you right there? How did that translate to you? Do you want me to read it again so you can get it? Okay, let's get it one more time. Prepare slaughter for his children. Let's, let's break that down. What does that start with? Prepare slaughter for his children. All right. Who do you think those children are that are preparing the slaughter? The children of Israel, right? Okay, let's keep going. 
prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So that's pretty straight cut and dry. That's saying that your forefathers skipped out on a bill that your ass is gonna have to pay for. And I say that with, with love, with love, right?